All right. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm hungry. Let's do this. Your posture pals. I need posture pals. Look, it's got little sparkles just like all my backgrounds. Wait, oh, I didn't read that at all. Tell me why this is a choices account shape your choose wisely. Okay. Your actions will have consequences. Let's go! Don't not entertainment. Don't not entertainment. Delos Crossing, Alaska, March 1st, 2005. Okay. Uh, well, we don't like games with police and don't nod. That never goes well. Is that a pancake? You're dirty. Hey, kiddo. I need to ask you a few questions, okay? They give that child Can you tell me coffee? What tonight? I I went to show her my haircut. She had a gun. She Take your time. She freaked out. I I It's okay. No, it's not. It's not okay. My mom tried to kill me, so... So I stabbed her. I killed my mother. Just straight off the bat, coming in hot. Killed my mom. Cool. 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 <laughs> God damn it, don't nod. Mm. Arcadia you Bay? No. Fireweed Residential Center, November 2nd, 2015. Ten years later. Yeah. Is this a Disney movie? Mom's dead in the first scene. Mm, no, I don't think it's Disney, but...
hate it. <laughs> I have got to make solid plans to see the Geminids. The Geminids? I wonder if Tyler would want to go. Where's Willis? Willis lives in Alaska. Hey, you want to freeze your ass off watching burning rocks fall through the sky? Yeah, I might need to work on my sales pitch. I need to bring this with me to Juno. Juno, Alaska. I should probably get rid of this. I mean, I can stream it anytime I want. A but Journey Through the Stars, Witches of Eldhem, Season 1 and 2. Yeah, me and this girl are friends. Just gonna cosplay her already. It's a rocket ship. Gift, itinerary, snacks, keys. All right. I think I'm ready to go now. Hockey? Is that you? That doesn't look like you. Police Chief Brown asks council to reconsider budget. Dock strike to begin this week. Mayoral election. Mayoral election. Candidate Tom Vecchi supports gun control. Money for local schools. Snacks are super important. Michael and Tyler are so going to hit it off. It's going to be so crazy to see him after all these years. I should probably check my email one more time before I go. No, check your I've email. I've done that three times this oh, morning. Bummer. Time and I against any two. The shape of yesterday. Summertime sweet. Um, thank you for the sub, Chloe, you beautiful angel. Something just went down my... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Something just... Oh, it's the rubber band from my braid that broke. <laughs> In my boobs. Is he gonna like this? It's or adorable. It Uh, look at that cute jewelry stand. Open the drawer. Open it! Take it. Why do Turn I still it. have this? Every time I look at it, it reminds me of how very single I am. Oh, that's okay. Boys suck. I definitely had something like this plastic drawer set in college. Hondo percento. Um, I didn't look at this. Did I look at Probably this? not going to see any stars at this time of day. Mars. I could look at this artwork all day. Dog party, I bet you love this game already. She's a space geek. Not the prettiest of my creations. But she weirdly kind of looks like me in the morning. I feel that. I don't really have time to dig through this right now. <gasps> oh my God, I wanna make one of those jars. I love it. Okay, it's a piece of wood hanging. It look, okay. I want one. I have something like that, but it's got flowers in it. Did I miss anything? Tiny little space dudes on the ceiling. Oh, I didn't look at this map. One day I'm gonna fill more of this in. Maybe Maybe. when the house is sold, I'll book some tickets. Fill it in. Is it a fill in map? It doesn't look like a fill in map. Let's read it. Dear Tyler, I know what you're thinking. A letter? Why all weird and formal? What's wrong with the email? Well, I figured, hey bro, I just wanted to give my twin a shout before reuniting after 10 years of swank juvies. Wait, reuniting after 10 years of swank juvie is more like letter territory. Whatever, you'll thank me when we're 90 and the machines have taken over and you still have something to read by the candlelight, see? 
always thinking ahead. Anyway, I can't believe you'll be out for real in a few weeks. What? Amazing! Definitely going to be awkward when I see you, so please try not to notice, okay? How is your last month going? Are you sad about leaving your mentees? I bet they're going to miss you. Hold on. Oh, and the other one broke. That's what happened. Okay. I got my tires replaced, so I'm all good to pick you up, and you can save the snark when you see my ride. She's been through a lot, and we can't be our all the car guys. Anyway, the veggies let me take the day off, so we can go straight to the old house and get it ready for the sale and everything. Can't wait to never think about that place again. I really can't wait to see you. I know if, if I made that, I don't know if I made that clear. Love you, Allison. I can't believe I'm about to leave this room for the last time. Okay, I'm pretty much done here. I just need to grab my goblin and I'm off. So we went to Juvie for self-defense. Okay, interesting. I know there's more to this, but weird. Man, the soundtrack to my angsty teen years. Been listening to this on a loop lately. Angsty teen years? Where's Charlotte when you need her? Bummed I have to leave this behind, but the old house would probably collapse if I blasted this inside. <laughs> Fireweed Youth Center. Yeah, he's going places. And I'll be able to say I helped him on his way. Tyler Ronan, 20. Matches young. Slinkit artist with favorite local venue. Shit I gotta do. Tutoring. Help Perez with college admins essay. Call back Dr. Beck. Meet Aaron. Re-gardening program set up. Miscellaneous. Finish paperwork for escape. With... What? Two? And letter for November 2nd, something for Allison. Sling it. I don't know how to say it. Shelter from the flood. I wish I could have finished this before I left, but God, it was a slog. I know most of these by heart at this point. The Transgender Man's Guide to Health Masculinity. Hey, little guy. You're gonna be reunited with your sister soon. I love you, little goblin. ASMR the game. Want me to just read everything really quietly? Cool. I guess I'm totally ready to go now. Bye, Herbert. Herbert the plant. Celebrate, educate, unite. Why won't it let me look at it? There we go. It does look like a little Yoda. You stay here. Educate the youngsters in classic cinema. Denali. I need to get my application ready for next summer. Herbert, do you know Lisa? Take me! This box of junk treasure is now yours by the first law of finders keepers. What? Fish! Fireweed. What a name, fireweed. Ooh, guys, I'm gonna want that jean jacket. Hey, Erin, you know I'm bad at this, but just wanted to say you've been the best counselor at an at-risk yet redeemable youth could want. Thanks for putting up with me and helping me in more ways than you know. I'll try to make it count outside fireweed. Survival is rebellion. Thanks, man. Thank you for the follow, Skywater. Best oh, mentor, you escaped. Good luck. Thing. See you soon. Oh, look at them all. So sweet. Oh, these are the musics. These are the musics. Did I miss anything? Man, I'm gonna miss that view. That's a good view. I wish we could zoom in on that view, but fine. Don't let us. Please. 
please give me water and sunshine. You just threw that out the window. Hi, Tyler. Hi. First time we see each other in 10 years, and it's hi, Tyler. Oh, sorry, I... It's fine, Allison. Hi is a good place to start. God, it's good to see you. <sighs> Likewise. She didn't get to visit him? You have anything else you need to get? Nope. This is it. My last ten years in a bag. Then we should get going. We just have time to make the morning ferry. You look good in that. Thanks. One of my mentees designed it. It's really good. Yeah, he's so incredibly talented. I got I a couple of local coffee shops to hang his art. Tyler Ronan, shaping the leaders of tomorrow. Yep. We're screwed. <laughs> So, are you gonna miss anything about this place? Oh, uh... How do I... Honestly? The people. The other residents, my mentees, my counselor, Aaron. It took me a while to fit in. But once I did, it felt like home. They made me feel safe. Safe enough to be me. That's so great. I'm really happy for you. Are we planning to drive to Delos Crossing or push? You are welcome to walk. Nah, I'll take my chances. Need one last look or anything? Looked. Let's go. Weed. <laughs> I just think that's such a funny name. No, really. I am 100% not creative enough to make that stuff up. Oh, and just last week, they had to turn the ferry around because a bear was on board. No way. Someone heard a commotion in the back of a delivery truck, so they opened it up. And there was the bear, fat and happy on a literal mountain of empty chip bags. <laughs> you go where the food is. Damn bears. Oh, I can relate to that. So then what happened? I'm not sure. I think they couldn't get him to leave, so they tranked him. Oh, poor buddy. Shot in the ass just for getting the munchies. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what they say. Safety first in bear country. Yeah, but prevention is best. Common sense goes a long way in keeping them from getting shot. The bear is fine, Tyler. For now. You hear they've been talking about loosening up regulations on trophy hunting again? Higher bag limits, inhumane ground traps, even bringing back hibernation hunting. Ugh. What kind of asshole gets off on killing a sleeping animal? I'm not against hunting, but predators play a vital role in the health of our natural parks. What? Why are you smiling? I'm being serious. Oh, I can tell, Ranger Tyler. Not yet, but at least I got the school part out of the way. I can't believe you've got a bachelor's already. While I boast a half-completed certificate in accounting from an online college that may have stolen my credit card number. You'll figure out what you want. You have time. <laughs> Yikes. Park ranger's not How so bad. Feeling? Like I'm about to drive straight into a whiteout and my fog lights are dead.
What about you? Allison? Well, zoned out there for a second. Sorry. What's up? I'm sorry. I'm just trying to wrap my head around the fact that you're right here, standing beside me, on our way to Delos. You don't have to apologize. It's a lot. Why did we take the ferry instead of the coast road? Because I didn't want to be stuck in the car with you for an extra two hours. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. We have to take the ferry. It's the only way to reach Delos from Fireweed. I see. Well, good. I don't think my stomach could have taken two more hours of how you handle curves. I'm sorry. Do you want to take over driving when we dock? <laughs> no. You're going to have to get back behind that wheel at some point, you know. Look, I put a Fireweed van nose first in a ditch. Hey. At least you missed the porcupine. I'm guessing things haven't changed much. You mean in Delos? Still the capital of East Jesus nowhere. Can't wait to get out of here. Was it really that bad? Pretty much. But it could definitely have been worse. Like if you'd been tucked away in a center for troubled youth? Right. At least you had Michael. Yeah. I don't think I'd have survived high school without him. Bet you're gonna miss him when you move to Juno. How's he doing? Good. Good, good. Uh, but I haven't seen him much outside of work lately. He's been busy with his dance and helping his clan organize a potlatch. Is that smoke coming out of Stonehouse? Which one is Stonehouse? Guess someone finally bought that old shack. That, or the ghosts are cozying up by the fire. Ooh, the cozy ghosts! No, it's totally haunted. I'm sure Tina did her best to keep them from figuring it out. At least until the paperwork was signed. Ugh. That house always gave me the creeps. Those windows are like huge gawking eyes. Uh, gawking eyes! You think people talk about our house this way? Probably. I can't look at the other house? So, we're really going back there, huh? To Stonehouse? Ooh, it's so pretty! I mean, we're going home. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Think the house will sell? Pretty nature, no pretty yet. mountains. Turns out, people don't line up to buy murder houses with no electricity. <laughs> At least it's got one hell of a view, unlike Juno. Hey, Juno has mountain views aplenty. It just also has people and fun. You still thinking you might be my roomie? Thinking about it. Hey. Can I ask you a question? Shoot. I was told... Um, I mean, after you, well, graduated, I guess, and became a mentor three years ago, you still basically spent all your time at Fireweed, right? Pretty much. There were a few times I tried to go to these meetups for trans people in Juno, but something always came up. I probably should have put myself out there more, but it was better to be around in case the residents needed me. So you were free to come and go as you pleased? Yeah. Uh, why do you ask? Oh, nothing. Looking. Just being an overly invested sister. Curious how you spent your time. It looks like I'm like looking down at my desk instead of the game. Allison? Yeah? Spit it out. Okay, you need to promise not to freak out. What is it? You had to take the glasses off to see it? <laughs> Couldn't see it through? I know he's not your favorite person, but... I'm sorry, when you said Eddie, I thought you meant Chief Brown, as in the police officer who arrested me. Come on, Ty, don't- And your adopted father, the man who didn't let you visit me for seven years. The Fireweed Administration backed him up, Tyler. They thought it was best for both of us. Yeah, well, it wasn't. It's a peace offering, and you're the two most important people in my life. Please, for me. He can't buy my forgiveness with some cheap-ass trinket. 
It's a gift, Tyler. You know what gift giving means in Clinket culture, and what it means Clinket. to refuse one. Clinket culture. Ah! I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it. Uh oh. I chose nothing. I know this is weird. But yes. Uncle Eddie's my family. He put up with me at my absolute worst and has always been consistent and kind. Oh. I'll take it, but I'm not going to wear it. Really? Really. Just so we're clear, this was for you, not Chief Brown. You know, you could call him Eddie, or even Uncle. <laughs> Hard pass. Did you hear that? Is it a whale? Are we going to see a whale? Whoa. To Whale's Diner. Like home. Yeah. Would it ruin the moment if I said I needed to go home? Uh, yes. Completely. Sorry. Go ahead and stop apologizing all the time. Okay, sorry. <sighs> Thanks. Not a big boat. It's so weird being back on this boat. Beer's my sport! Check my six-pack! Here to hunt, huh? Rude. Impressive, ain't you? She planned an Atlanta moose with that? You got your license and tag on you? Fish mostly. Shaven men, very. You'll find there's lots of good fishing spots right here. If you know what to look for, where are you headed? Uh, Delos Crossing. Same here. You from around here? Born and bred. Ah, uh, you don't say. I moved to Anchorage around the age. Delos was mostly Alaska natives then. I haven't been home in five years. Oh, so you owed your family a visit? I'll say. You may not know it yet, but your folks, they get old real fast. Right. I'm Alex, by the way. Alex Gershwin. No relation. Huh? To George Gershwin. Um... Gershwin, the pianist. Folks are always asking. <laughs> Charming. Where are you headed? Uh, Delos Crossing. Same here. You from around here. We already had this conversation. Thought that there would be something new. Ecology matters. I think I'm gonna sit in the car for the rest of the ride. Oh. Uh. There's probably is there more to look at in the car? 
Yeah, I'm good. Oh, that meant we we're over. Whoops, it's a small ship. I feel like I saw everything. Angsty music time. Like in the game, like in the game. I mean, you know, it's already tragic, complicated, such consequences. What did I miss? That boat was super small. I walked all around it. Well, I didn't know it was gonna change the scene. I thought I could look at stuff in the car. <laughs> Whoops. Hey, Psycho Levo. Yeah, he did start saying the same. I guess I could have answered him differently and we could have gotten different um, responses from him. Maybe that's what Dog Party's talking about. Wow. It's basically exactly like I remember it. Only faded. Like a Polaroid left on a windowsill. Oh, a Polaroid, from you the said? Outside? It almost looks charming. Charm's not the problem. Structural integrity may be an issue. <laughs> you think there's a chance whoever buys it will just tear it down? If someone buys it, they can do whatever they want with it. You wouldn't care at all? Would you? Sure. Everywhere I look, I see a piece of one of our adventures. Everywhere I look, I just see her. Allison, we could go grab a bite. Start this tomorrow? No. The only way to get this done is to do it. Let's do it! Only way to get you. this done is to do it. No bobcats, no thank you. No, bobcats don't want Man, them. Man, always spoiled the birds. She liked animals way more than people. Same. No that. Just kidding. Hey, you remember that? Come on, Tyler. It's freezing out here. You're right. Sorry. Let's head inside. What's it say? It says, Ollie and Allison Vessel. You can complain all you want about it being cold. I'm gonna explore. Doesn't seem like the greenest source of energy. Not like she had the money for solar panels. At least we don't have any use for this right now. Luckily. Remember the snowstorm in 2004? Marianne had us digging for hours. I remember she made it a game, at least. That's right. We made tunnels to escape the ice troll. Ice I troll! Hate it to her. She could make us do anything if she turned it into a goblin tail. A goblin tail? Nothing I like a we goblin left all tail. All kinds of cool things in there. I bet we left all kinds of cool things in there. Remember how mad she'd get if we didn't use the compost? And she always knew when we were lying. Waste not, oh, or frog. kiss the planet goodbye. I can't believe these are still here. Yeah, 
We should hide them so they don't frighten away potential buyers. At least the shed's still standing. Yep. I don't want to think about what might be living inside it, though. Well, better alive than dead. Ugh, yes. Let's... Hey, it's locked, all right. Yeah, it's locked, all right! Juno, Alaska! Come on, man. Stop. Well, at least the tools are still here. That'll help with the repairs. They're good quality, too. Marianne wanted stuff like that to last. She did not like us using her tools. She was probably just afraid we'd hurt ourselves. Or she thought we'd go on a rampage and tear up her precious plants. And we would have, so... Plants! Cleaning products may be better for the planet, but they do not have the same shelf life. Ugh. Add it to the shopping list. Okay. Explore, explore, explore. Exploring, exploring, exploring. Exploring, exploring, exploring. We're exploring. Look uh, in the did window. You smoke something before you left Fireweed? The door's right there. I just want to look. Uh, did you smoke something before uh, you left Fireweed? I like how the door's uh, right there. Did you smoke something before you left Fireweed? Locked. Well, it's a good thing I remember this. Why would it be open? Why would it just be open? You sure that's the right key? Yes. Maybe someone changed the lock. Who would change the lock on us? I don't know. We're screwed. You got a plan B? Yeah. We find another way in. I never knew a locked door that could keep the crafty goblins out. Yeah, we had a million ways in and out of this old house. At least crafty one of them goblins. Work. Crafty, crafty goblins. Smash the window. Yeah, that'll help sell the house. Come by this house. It's got crafty smashed goblins. windows. I haven't thought about them in forever. Where There's nowhere else to us. explore. We almost spent more time as goblins than did as kids. Oh, this forest is so cool, like some elven kingdom. Our hidden domain, far away from the stress of the modern world. Oh, I want to so go to there. In its own way. I didn't have to deal with pumping gas and buying groceries, paying rent. Is my brother feeling a little unprepared? <laughs> Staying at Fireweed, let me put off all that adult stuff. You'll get used to it. Just like everyone else. Thanks. Or not. I'm not. I hate it. Remember how sucks. whenever we lost our toys in the sand, we thought the mad hunter had stolen them? Aw, uh, you're out of your element, little guy. How do you know? Maybe he's a snowfish. Snowfish? Hey, I think that's the same rake I cut my foot on. Wait, your foot? Wasn't that me? What? Oh, yeah. I think you're right. Weird twin stuff. How many stuff. sand castles did we build with this? None that survived. We thought this sandbox would hide us from the mad hunter, remember? That's right. The sand was, what, supposed to distort his piercing eye? Oh, left shift. Ah, uh, the mad hunter. That was some dark shit for two little kids. Yeah, that's why we liked it. Um, I don't know if if they were identical twins or fraternal twins. There was that one picture of them um in the in her room that I looked at. Now can I look at this? Oh. I could break a window. You know civilized people don't do that, right? Oh, so we're civilized now? Well, yeah, we're maybe super not. civilized! But we are trying to sell this place, and broken windows aren't exactly amenities. That's what I said. Ooh, 
How'd she get around on these roads with this thing? She'd rather have broken her neck than spend money on a new one. Yeah, still waiting for those bikes she promised us. Uncle Eddie got me one, but I hardly ever used it. It's okay, I mean, I'm still standing. looking at a yep. lot of different things. I don't want to think about what might be living inside it, though. Well, better alive than dead. What about this Ugh. ladder? Yes. Let's deal with that later. Plenty else to do first. No way. Oh, there's a dog. I can't believe it's still there. What a cute little property. Oh. Looks like a neighbor came by. It's funny. I can't remember any signs of them when we were kids. Probably because our mother scared the shit out of them. Yeah, she scared everybody else off too. Do, do, do. I wonder if there are still fish in the lake. Uncle Eddie taught us to fish here. You still fish? Nope. You? Every Sunday morning. Once I could leave fireweed, of course. Totally. At first, it kind of made me crazy. And then I started to really like it. It was relaxing. Really? Yeah, you know. The lake, the water, the sky. sky. Me, just a speck in the middle of it all. A speck with a spliff? Always. Mm -hmm. I still can't believe I convinced you to climb that raggedy ass tree with me. Yeah, not happening a second time. Oh, come on. I was the one who fell out. And then I had to walk all the way to Delos Crossing to get Tessa to drive you to the hospital. I was <laughs> fine. You had a concussion. She flipped out. When she finally got back from bartering for socks or whatever. Tessa was so mad she wouldn't even talk to her. Um, no beavers. Too bad. A picture of him would have helped with the sale. <laughs> yeah, city people love cute furry animals. Yeah, we do. Wildlife, but not the kind that eats the insulation. Situated comfortably in the ass of the world, solicitors will never come knocking. In fact, no one will ever come at all. Yep. <laughs> yep. We should do this for a living. Yes. Yes, we should. It's so pretty. Out there? No, you're right. You really want to go out there? No, you're right. <sighs> yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> Move, Allison. <laughs> stuff in there what'd you find our hidden treasure seriously how do we think to stash it there goblin secrets are always well kept it looks like a caboodle what'd you find our hidden treasure seriously how do we think to stash it there goblin secrets are always well kept you need a hand with that no it should be fine okay if we just get this board out of the way i could probably squeeze through so we need something to pry it off. It's screwed in pretty good. We need a screwdriver. A screwdriver? I know where there's one I of think those. I saw one back in the shed. Yeah, you did. We both did. I'm assuming that means that both of these doors don't open. I don't know why they would, but you know, just check them for open checking's sesame. sake. Let me guess. It's locked. Yep. Know any other secret passwords? Hmm. Honeydew? <laughs> nope. Honeydew? <laughs> Excuse me. 
Excuse me. Okay. To the shed. Can I run? Is there a journal? Is it, or is it the collectibles? Or is that just the save? The little journal thing that turns pages. At least the shed's still standing. Yep. I don't want to think about what here? might be living inside it, though. Well, better alive than dead. Ugh, yes. Let's hey, it's locked, all right. There, what, what? How do we get in here? Maybe we can break this window. Okay. Should be something in here that'll work. Screwdriver. I guess Marianne left us something useful, huh? Yeah. We still have to find a way to get inside, though. And problems. Please, no broken windows. We get we'll problems. What's happening? Do you feel that? Oh no! And don't leave this room until everything looks as clean as a whistle. Ugh. This is the millionth time I've gotten in trouble because of you. You and your big mouth. Hey, you were thinking the same thing. You just weren't brave enough to tell her. What good would it do? It's not like she ever listens to us anyway. Well, I'd rather scream it right in her stupid face than be a quiet little mouse. Oh, we forgot the key. We need to put it back. Maybe we could hide it somewhere. You know, for fun. Goblins are supposed to help the princess, not play mean tricks. Whatever, you're not fun. I'm only trying not to make her even worse. Whoa, did that just happen? I don't know. But I saw it too. It felt like it did when we used to share thoughts with our voice. It did. But that was a memory of us 10 years ago, right? I, I vaguely remember it happening. I think so. And uh, that's new, right? Yeah. We could share thoughts and feelings, but we never replayed memories like that. Why would it happen? Freaky twin powers! And why that memory? I don't know. It's pretty eerie. No, I'm. I Weird. think I read it. Uh, Her voice was always a good thing. This could be too. I read that the game never dead names Tyler. Uses their old name. I'm his feeling old name. something again. Near the barn. Um. Yeah, me too. The goblins is just like I think it's something. Um. Their mom, they, like, they would, her, their mom called them little goblins and would, like, Ooh. tell stories. Like, they were talking about how she made, turn things into games, and she, they were just her little goblins, I guess, is what they called. Where'd you hide the key, kids? Hurry, let's go see the silent frog. Coming, I'm coming. What? Stop sulking. I told you already, I'm sorry. No, you're not. Okay, guess you don't want to see what I put in the treasure room then. What? No, I want to see. I guess we know where to search now. We just have to remember which one is the silent frog. Probably the one covering its mouth? So, which one of you is hiding the key? Damn, where's the key? Seriously? Kidding. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Nice job, keep No one quiet. cleaned up any of this stuff for 10 years? It just sat here? I can't believe these are still here. Yeah, we should hide them so they don't frighten away potential buyers. At least the shed's still standing. Yep. I don't want to think about what might be living inside it, though. Well, better alive than dead. It is secluded. Yes. You're right. Let's deal with that later. Plenty else to do first. What's this box? <sighs> Trying, <sighs> having a hard time. Take it. I don't know what it is, but take it. Huh? Who left this box here? I... It looks brand new. It's a it box wasn't me. of something. Has I don't know what it was. Someone been out here recently? Guess it's your lucky day, bird friends. Oh, it's birdseed. Got it. All this for a screwdriver? 
You got a better idea how to get in? Nothing else useful in here? I feel like there's gotta be more useful things in here. What? Let's go put some bird seed in the bird feeder. These birds should get a reward for watching the house all these years. Thank you for your service, little friends. Um, oh, Monique, I thought that DIT was no longer a school. I thought they, like, shut down. Is that not right? I thought they did. Give him the birds, the food, food for the birds, food for the birds. I think. That wood went flying. I would have gotten some of it in my eyes. Are you sure you want to go in there? This was our very first den, remember? Who knows what lives down there now? Come on, Allison, you big scaredy cat. Everything okay down there? Tyler? Ah! Oh, that's not funny. <laughs> Then why am I laughing? Okay, fine. But you're still an idiot. All right. I'm going in for real this time. That scared me okay. a little bit. I'll see you at the front door in a few minutes. Let's go under the creepy house! What could go wrong? Need to go left, I think. You were right. Nothing here. Of course I was. Ooh. Wait, did I take it? Why can't take? Take, 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 take. Jefferson does not live under here. I would have taken the gold. Not even in your dreams. Trying to get to where that caboodle looking treasure was. Oh, I see a, a goblin painting. Oh, dragons, that's what they were talking about. We got any real twins in here? Is this actually a thing? Little tea party, we are, we are the crafty goblins, yes we are. Nope, it was on the right. My bad. Oops, well then I should go left. Can twins actually do this? Wow, can't say I ever expected to see you again. It's been a long time, buddy. Why are we looking at its butt? Why are we able to look at its butt? <laughs>
The treasure room. Ooh, a kite. You were right, sis. Of course. A goblin never forgets where she stashed her treasure. Marianne grilled us about all these missing dishes, but a goblin never gives up their treasure. Wow. <gasps> pink. It always had to be pink. <laughs> I found her old kite. <laughs> I think its wings have been clipped, though. Rest in peace, brave bird. Brave bird. Past the treasure. Straight, Straight ahead. ahead. You know, I almost convinced myself our voice was just another childhood fantasy. Me too. But we really are con Mad Hunter. Why am I still afraid to say his name? He was Mary Ann's creation. She made all the creepy characters. Awesome momming, Mary Ann. <laughs> Making creepy characters for the kiddos. Beware the mad hunter. Zombies. Dead plants. Listen to the collectibles? I mean, it's quaint. Coming. Twelve. Are you okay? I'll live. Good to hear your voice again. Yeah. Same here. So, coming in or what? Just working up to it. Well, we're here. Here we are. So, how do we get started? We figure out what to keep, what to trash, and see what else this house might be trying to show us. What happened? Why did we, why did we time out Leshy? What just happened? <laughs> I, she does have cute boots. Wow. It doesn't seem real. Oh, the crafty goblins are two cunning little thieves who live under the princess's house. They're always getting into mischief, but they have good hearts. Cute. Thank you for following, Vasilis. Vasilis. The mad hunter is a cruel and ruthless creature. Once he starts hunting someone, he never stops. He'll chase yeah, his prey right. to the ends of the earth if he needs to. No one can escape his piercing eye. Terrifying! Of course, Time to explore no more. Ice, no power. All right, let's see. A broken shelf, broken jar, and the washing machine. Broken. <laughs> the dryer never worked to begin with. Marianne thought dryers were straight up evil. Energy hogs. I hated hanging drippy laundry. I refused to change for a few weeks once, so I wouldn't have to do it. Gross. Ooh, this place needs some serious cleaning. Or an exorcist.
bunch of really old oh no that's not food or an exorcism that's a cute door Very nice room. let's not go in there until we absolutely have to agreed man this mom did number on them we should take down the creepy masks if we don't want to scare the buyers away Oh, so now you don't want to scare someone with those masks. Are these authentic, Clinket? I doubt it. I'm surprised Marianne would buy fakes. 20 years ago, everyone was buying fakes. So, Clinket is the is a local Alaskan native tribe and their community has a lot Ooh, I love that poster. <gasps> Someone make it. I need it. That is beautiful. Huh. This bathroom still smells like Marianne. A good scrub and we'll be rid of that too. We were so competitive about who measured taller. Like we actually had anything to do with it. And after all that, it ended in a tie. <laughs> yeah. None of that crazy stretching I did made any difference. What are we gonna do with all her jewelry? Well, I'm certainly not gonna wear it. Donation pile it is, then. Wow. I forgot all about her weird concoctions. And how she was always testing them on us. Like we were lab rats. Hmm. Not a total disaster, Ronan. Handmade soap. Still here after 10 years. Impressive. You could say that about the entire house. Mm-hmm. I know it's got such little kitty stuff in it because they were kids when they left. I'm surprised that like the bank didn't take it and sell it and destroy it or like, isn't that what usually happens? Like an estate sale? Wild, it is in the middle of nowhere. Little stickers everywhere. Huh. What was she hoping to do with all these jars? She used to barter for our clothes with homemade jam. She tried everything to make ends meet. Well, not everything. Best mom. <laughs> you think we ever really believed that? Or were we just trying to make her happy? Either way, it wasn't true. <laughs> Sponsored by the local goblins. Guess we never had time to complete the collection. These came out of one of the prize machines at the Vecchi store, right? Yeah, you'd slide Vecchi's. the quarters inside on the little tray, and then magic, out pops a sticker. I love those machines. After all this time, I, I thought I'd feel more prepared to deal with this mess. 2005. Of course. Fix the window. Am I stuck? Oh, here we go. How are you feeling about being back? <sighs> I thought I knew what to expect, but... I just did something! Everything keeps catching me by surprise. My nerves are completely raw. I get it. How about you? You okay? I'm honestly not sure how I feel yet. I'm just trying to think of it as an empty house. Yeah, an empty house full of actual ghosts. No! Hopefully they're friendly ghosts. Don't say that. Like Casper. Hey, 
Mom, we are sorry the vase got broke. We didn't know you love it so much. We need to be careful and not act up in the window room. The window room? Next time we will try and use good judgment. Please forgive us for doing bad things. I'm sorry too. We should be more careful. I'm very sad we made you cry so much. We should play outside instead. I will tell Ollie not to be wild all the time. We aren't going to do it anymore. We are sorry. Oops. What are you reading? A letter we wrote her. To apologize for breaking that stupid face, remember? Bore your kids into good behavior. Great parenting strategy. Old textbooks. Tessa gave them to us, right? Yeah, she thought we were gifted. What about you? You think you're gifted? I wouldn't be here if I was. What? Like, in this house with me? I mean anywhere near here. I'd be working in Juno or Seattle or something. Seattle! She pinched every penny. I wonder how Tessa's gonna react when she sees me. She's got the whole Catholic thing going on, but it's me. She's gonna be cool, right? Allison, no response? Great, love that. I don't remember these. It's probably one of Marianne's unfinished masterpieces. There's two of them. Maybe they were us, in some weird way that only made sense to Marianne. took so many pictures. Yeah, like she had to document every second of our lives. You can keep some of them, if you want. <sighs> no thanks. I mean, I like the photos of us, but I don't think I can forget that she was the one aiming the camera. Okay. Wow, I'm so embarrassed for us. Many Da Vinci's we were not. She saved every drawing we ever did. There's a couple of these I might keep. That's okay, Steinmore. Have an awesome time off stream. We'll see you on Friday. I'm sorry about your internet. So is their mother one of the Tlink? I can't Tlink it. There's a memory here. Where is it? It's it's memorying. It's doing the memory thing, how do I? Mom, about me joining the hockey team? Mom. Sorry, what? Uh, not now. Maybe next year. But you promised. Keep whining, and my next year will become never. Can you cut my hair? Your hair is fine. But I want to cut it short, really short. What? Look, I'm tired, and I'm busy. Let's talk about this later. You always say that. Marianne said no to everything. It made me so pissed. She was always on edge those last few months. Yeah, and completely deaf to everything I was telling her I needed. She pretty much always said no to me too. True, but it felt personal with me. She was trying to save the planet way before Al Gore made it cool. Has Al Gore ever made anything cool? <laughs> nah. I guess she was right about one thing. But you can't really blame anyone for not listening to crazy Marianne Ronan. I didn't realize how much I missed the smell of firewood. I miss the cold winter nights curled up here. Eating big mugs of hot cocoa. That sounds yeah, delightful. 
Marianne was so tired she was usually asleep on the couch. Ah, that's why it was so nice. No, Marianne. We'd use our voice so we didn't wake her up. And then we'd be up all night telling stories and watching the fire die. And Marianne was none the wiser. Oh, well, I thought I was gonna look at the um, dream catcher. Is there anything I missed over here? I saw the birds. The barbs! Time to go upstairs. I want that poster. Pretty big, spacious little house. Cute. If you don't come up soon, I'm gonna take whatever I want from our bedroom. No way, wait for me. No. No, this, this feels like home. Oh, it's so cute. So much for my dream of being a hockey star. Marianne thought sports were too aggressive, too competitive, and too group thinky. How did you convince me to let you put this up? It was my favorite movie back then. The Missing Link. I love all this um, floral art. You know, if there's one thing you gotta give Marianne, it's that she let us explore our artistic side. You should have seen Eddie's face when I tried to repaint his car. Yeah, I bet Uncle Eddie didn't appreciate your artistic touch. <laughs> I'd rather you called him Chief Brown if you're gonna be an ass about it. Our space cow tack. <laughs> Hello, the new Max Matrix. Um. Wow. Some of our old toys give me the creeps. Same. Same, same, same. It's like Rapunzel's room in here. All the art drawn on the walls. Whenever we asked for a TV, she'd just bring home a big stack of books. I think she did us a favor with that one. Mm, you may not agree when we start digging into the HBO back catalog. We'll see. <laughs> ha! That's funny. More roller skating! I never appreciated this view as kids. Hey, the postcard we sent ourselves from Juno. Forever alone. What? We barely had any friends. We even had to be our own pen pals. Ah, oh, Guten Nacht to Germany. Hello, Allison and Ollie. We are writing from the past. What is it like in the future? Anyway, Juno was super cool. We took the tramway all the way up. Ollie was scared. Liar. Mommy got some books, but Mommy went to the restaurant at night and forgot them. It was cool. There were a lot of whales on the ferry. No, there wasn't. There were the, they were in the water, stupid. Anyway, here's a postcard to remind you how awesome we are, especially me. A&O, Allison and Ollie or Ronan. Okay, here's the box of stuff. Look what I found. What? Only our greatest creation, the Book of Goblins. The Book of Goblins! <gasps> Seriously? It was in that chest. All these stories. <gasps> I had ideas for so many more. How Mary cute! Wrote a lot of them. Yeah. It's one of the only times I remember her being at peace. Wow, look at all these. What a cute, oh, this is so cute, little scrapbook. I love this. Wow, there's a lot of these, aren't there? <laughs> Once upon a time in an ancient, this would be the thing you can vary the playtime with a lot, got it. 
Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a big frog in a small pond. She was a peaceful creature who spent most of her time eating, swimming, and sleeping. From the morning to the evening, she did everything the smaller frogs did, except she did it bigger. She ate more, she jumped farther, and she was smarter, and she made more noise. Everybody in the forest could hear her loud croaking, and everybody was happy that they could. You see, it was easy to get lost in the forest, but thanks to the frog's loud noises, you could ju easily, just as easily find your way back to her pond. Maybe it would not have been the same if the big frog had kept singing during the night, but she was much too lazy an animal to stay active after dark. Uh, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for subbing. Thank you so much. Thank you for that sub. One day, an unknown visitor came to the forest for the first time. It was a young woman dressed in a beautiful gown. Uh, she was walking fast through the woods as if she was running away, and she never looked back. Many eyes spied the princess pass by, but no one dared to help her, for the mad hunter was on her tail trail. This is not our business, they said, and we had better look away, for the mad hunter was an unyielding man who loved nothing but hunting down prey for money and glory. Nothing could escape his piercing eye for long. So... The princess walked alone without help until she was hopelessly lost in the big forest. Exhausted, she pressed on with no idea of where she was heading. As the hunter drew ever closer, dogged in his pursuit, she continued this way until she heard a heavy croaking far off to her left. So clear and loud, the princess immediately made for the source of the noise. A few minutes later, she reached the big frog in the small pond, and the frog looked at her with a gentle smile. Help me, please, said the princess. I need a place to rest and hide. Ribbit, answered the frog, and the princess frowned. Please stop making noise. The mad hunter is after me. Ribbit said the frog again, so loud that the princess had to cover her ears. The creature began to jump every which way. What are you doing? asked the princess. Stop all that noise or he will find us. But the frog kept croaking and jumping around her, left and right, up and down, rabbit, rabbit, until the princess understood the meaning of all this fuss. Cautiously, the woman climbed on the back of the big animal, and then with a leap, the frog set off away from the pond. The frog jumped so high and so far that even the hunter could not find where the princess had gone. With a few jumps, the princess was out of his piercing eye. Just a few jumps more and she had vanished for good. The princess closed her eyes and let her clever mount carry her wherever the creature pleased. Less than an hour later, the big frog had reached the other side of the ancient forest near the shores of the very deep lake. There she landed without a noise in front of a big wooden house that had been abandoned. Thank you, said the princess, covering the animal's snout with kisses. I only wish you could speak, so I would have understood what you were trying to do sooner. As she pronounced those words, something incredible happened, and the big frog was suddenly able to speak. Her first words startled the princess. The mad hunter is always at my heels. Now you're safe and I've had my revenge. Oh, wait, no. That's the princess? No, that's the frog. You can stay in this house. It has been abandoned for a long time and no one will look for you here. And then, without looking back, the big frog jumped into the pond. And this is how the big frog saved the princess and how she earned, her right, she earned the right to speak. So, the princess is the mom, the frog is someone, the house is their house, so someone was after the mom and she hid from them in this house. And they were probably finding her, or about to find her, and that's why she was so agitated. Because they were looking for her. I cannot do that. Oh, look at the art! I love the art so much! 
these stories are gonna, they're like hints into the past, but I'm not gonna be able to read all of these. <sighs> Correct. The Bear and the Princess. Once upon a time in the ancient and deep forest, the old bear stood on the bank of the river, swiping at salmon on their way to the spawning grounds. Just as he'd got his paw on a particularly fat one, he heard a woman shouting for help. He considered simply eating his salmon, but then she screamed again, and he lumbered over to investigate. After a short walk, he found the princess clinging to the top of the tree while a wolf snarled and snapped at the base of the tree. Old Bear would normally not get in the middle of such a situation. After all, as a fellow predator, he understood the wolf's need to hunt. But when he saw the princess, he was struck by her beauty, and he knew he had to help. With a great roar, the bear stood. The bear heaved onto his hind legs, rising to his full height. The wolf snapped and snarled in his direction, but the bear roared again and the wolf took off into the tree's tail between his legs. The old bear fell back down onto all fours and stared up at the princess. She regarded him fearfully. You can come down, he said. How do I know you didn't save me just so you could eat me yourself? asked the princess. I suppose this is a fair question, admitted the old bear, but I promise I won't eat you. The princess had no reason to trust the old bear, except that he had kind eyes, and so she slowly made her way down the tree. When she reached the ground, the bear only watched her, and so she supposed she was not going to be eaten today. Thank you, she told the old bear. Of course, he said. Can I walk you back to your home? Of course, said the princess. I'm totally reading this. I just realized, like, Alice from Alice, Disney's Alice in Wonderland. A oh, Mr. Rabbit! <laughs> and so the princess and the old bear walked together through the forest back to the big wooden house. After that day, the princess would occasionally find gifts from the bear. A fresh caught salmon, a handful of ripe berries, a newly bloomed bluebell. One spring, when the sudden thaw flooded the path out of the princess's flooded the path out of the princess's home, the old bear was there, and she rode his back across the river. The old bear began to think that the princess should be his mate. After all, she had no mate, and she needed one, and he could keep her warm and provide her a much suitable den, and catch fish for her, and protect her from wolves. She in turn would brush out his fur and pick berries without smooshing half of them, and scratch that one part of his back he couldn't reach. And without, with how she took care of the goblins, she would be an excellent mother for his cubs. One day, the old bear came with a ring of spruce and asked the princess to be his bride. I'm sorry, said the princess. You are a very good friend and I appreciate all you've done for me, but I cannot marry you. You're a bear and I'm a princess. It would never work. The old bear was crushed. Can we still be friends? he asked. We will always be friends, said the princess. But I will never marry you. The old bear and the princess carried on their friendship, and after one year he tried again to ask her to be his bride, but once again she refused him. This happened one year later and one year after that, and then finally the princess said, Old bear, you are my dear friend, and I appreciate all you have done for me, but I would sooner you have left me to the wolves than marry you, and that is how it will always be. Be. I have my hands full with the two goblins who live under my house, and they're all I need. That wounded the old bear deeply, but it was finally enough to stop his proposals. They remained friends, and he continued to give her gifts of fresh salmon and ripe berries and newly bloomed bluebells, but the old bear never again asked the princess to be his bride as much as he might have wanted to. 
And that is how the princess befriended the old bear and how she refused him. Okay, so do we think the old bear is uh, Eddie? Do we think the old bear is Eddie? Oh my god, Jake, you're such a sweetheart. Hi! <laughs> Sanctum, thank you for popping in. I, I've, I've played, I've been playing more Final Fantasy. We'll play, we'll play. Hi, Kyrie. Oh, the beavers fixes the house. The princess's party. The goblins and the ice cave. The princess and the two thieves. The princess makes new friends. The bear's big paws. Hey, Charlotte. The moon hag loses her name. Oh, two goblins trick the mad hunter. I... The goblins earn their voice. Look at those little goblins. Read the party one. Yeah, the, the you guys who have played this already and know which ones are important, tell me which ones to read. The princess's party. Oh my gosh, it's like Kate's children's book. I should put myself on, I should read all these stories as Kate on YouTube. <laughs> Uh. Hey, armchair science. Uh. I like my princess voice, though. <laughs> the princess's party. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, the princess was melancholy because it was the one-year anniversary of when she had run away from home. Sensing her sadness, her forest friends showed up at her door. They were headed by the pelican, pious and attentive and organized by the moose, stalwart and far-sighted, the old bear was there with his claws so sharp as well as the big frog prattling away. Even the haughty muskrat, who almost never had time for anyone, had come. The bear, it's my, it's, it's Alice! Oh, Mr. Rabbit! Oh, Mr. Rabbit! Off with my head! Oh, Mr. Rabbit! Oh, Dinah! Alice in Wonderland. Well, now I don't want to read it. Charlotte hurt my feelings, so. Uh, Charlotte. How does she... Read it as Charlotte. Charlotte. Charlotte's, uh... Whoa. It's just like that. 
Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, the princess was melancholy because no, melancholy because it was the one year anniversary of when she had run away from home. Sensing her sadness, her forest friends showed up at her door. They were headed by the pelican, pious and attentive and organised by the moose, stalwart and far-sighted, the old bear was there with his claws so sharp, as well as the big frog prattling away. Even the haughty muskrat, who almost never had time for anyone, had come. The bear invited her to ride on his back, promising no wolf would harry her path. Then the animals led her to a fairy glen, where a fabulous party had been prepared. There was a buffet of seafood the pelican had served from, from her never emptying beak. The air was filled with winking fairy lights. The moon had arranged after clouds filled the sky, and the gregarious, gregarious frog mixed up fizzy drinks. Only the muskrat had done nothing in particular, mooching off everyone else's hard work. <laughs> The princess had very good time at her had a very good time at her party, such a good time that she forgot to say thank you to any of her friends. Noticing this, the fairies devised a bit of mischief. When the princess went to open a gift, she found three identical boxes at the edge of the glen. Puzzled, she turned back and gasped. The entire party had vanished. Puzzled, she turned back and gasped. Oops. Because you have taken your friends for granted, called the naughty fairies, we have hidden them from you. But we like games, so guess who has given. You each of these presents, and you'll get your friends back. Hey, man, I'll take t I'll take sounding like Helena Bottom Carter. She is fantastic. The princess opened the first box. Inside, there was a torch, which she lit. Revealed the truth. With twin lit, revealed the truth. Hmm," said the princess. "Someone wants to make sure I don't get lost in the woods when it's dark, and that I always see from wrong, right from wrong. Which of my friends would give me a gift like that?" She opened the second box. Inside there was a magic sword which would help, which would leap out of the bearer's hands to defend them. Hmm, said the princess. Someone wants to make sure I'm protected if I'm ever under threat. Which of my friends would give me a gift like that? She opened... <laughs> I was trying to... I was trying to think of how Charlotte sounded when we played Fortnite. She's like, sure, no, you're fine. No, we won. She opened the third box. Inside there was a bag of coins that always provided money if it was for something the bearer truly needed. Hmm, said the princess. Someone wants to make sure I have money for to buy food when I'm hungry and clothes when I'm cold. Which of my friends would give me a gift like that? <laughs> Stop giving me a northern ice. The princess thought about her friends, and then she smiled certainly. Fairy, she said, I may have been thoughtless, but I appreciate that all my friends have given to me, and that they all that they have done for me. She gave her answers, and the vexed fairies were forced to restore the party in a flash of colourful light. One by one, she gave the animals a hug, and thanked them for their presence. The party and all that. All they had done to help since she'd moved into the forest. And that is how the princess celebrated her first anniversary in the woods. <laughs> I don't know what the different regions sound like. The big frog is punished. Dog Party says Charlotte sounds like the queen, but I've not talked with the queen, so. I don't know. Everyone's making fun of how I'm I'm reading the stories and I I don't there's so many of these and I don't know which ones are important. And I should read or not. And I'm hungry. <laughs> oh. 
once upon a time in a deep and cold lake near the ancient forest, there lived an old seal who was a powerful witch. After angering the Ice King, she had been bound to the lake, allowed only to venture out when the moon was full. And only looking like the hag she truly was. For years she dreamed of vengeance, all alone within the deep lake among the corpses of her many previous victims. One night she awoke to see a black and hooded silhouette climb to reach a beautiful gown full of stone. The human had delved far deeper into the lake than any land dweller should have been able to go. His tenacity and ferociousness impressed the moon hag, and she decided he would be wasted in her set statuary of corpses. She used her magic to inspell him, allowing him to breathe underwater, but also binding him to her service. You, she said, will be the instrument of my release and my revenge, for you and I together will kill the Ice King. The moon hag had never heard of the mad hunter. She did not know the power he wielded. She could only tell he was a hunter, and her lust for revenge blinded her to the threat he posed. She gifted him a hand of ice, which she was not as nimble as a hind of flesh, but allowed him to serve her better than no hand at all. The moon hag spent years devising the perfect plan to kill the Ice King, and years more removing, moving all the pieces into place to execute it. In the meantime, the mad hunter served her, guarding her chest of treasures and plotting his own plot. Finally, everything was prepared. The full moon rose and the moon hag stepped on land, giddy at the thought that she would never have to leave again if it did not please her. She brought the mad hunter to his post, a jagged peak of ice and stone from which she would loose all the arrows that would slay the ice king. Before she could go, he put forward a proposal. Moon hag, said the mad hunter, if you grow back my missing hand, I would be certain to hit the Ice King with my arrow. We will have only one shot, and I would hate to miss. You're a powerful witch, so you'll be able to craft ties to bind me to this place that I cannot break. The moon hag considered it. All right, I will grow back your hand and then bind you here with ties that will not break. She cast a spell and the mad hunter's hand of ice was replaced with a hand of flesh. As the witch left to complete the next part of her plan, the mad hunter grinned wickedly in the moonlight. After a short time, the moon hag returned, luring the ice king into the mad hunter's line of sight. What is this about, Moon Hag? asked the Ice King. Many a long year you have bound me to the lake, said the Moon Hag. Many a long year I've been alone in the dark. This, that ends tonight. She cast a powerful spell that made the Ice King slow to react. <laughs> slow to react and then gave the signal Mad hunter, she cried, let your arrow fly! Nothing happened. She twitched nervously. Mad hunter, she growled, let your arrow fly! Still nothing. The Ice King, meanwhile, was striding toward her, slow but furious. The moon hag fled, running first to the jagged peak of ice and stone where her servant should have waited. But the peak was empty. The ties had been broken and the mad hunter was gone. For in the end he was the more powerful of the two. Especially once he had two hands. I lost my spot. <laughs> When the Ice King finally caught the hag, 
His furious voice could be heard throughout the forest. For your wickedness, you will be eternally bound to the lake. You will no longer be allowed to leave. Not even under a full moon. The moon hag was imprisoned in the lake and she never tried to escape. And that is how the mad hunter escaped the moon hag and how he got his left hand back. All right. uh, where Maybe. is it? Are you looking for something in particular? My diary. You never told me about it. Yeah. With the way Marianne was, I tried extra hard to keep it a secret. Marianne. Yeah, that day she found out about it. Try to remember 